1965, my family got transferred from Los Angeles up to San Francisco. I was a senior in high school, Lindsay was a junior. I met him one day, and then I never saw him or heard of him or from him again for two years. Two years later, uh, the, he was in a band, and the drummer in his band called me and asked me, would I be interested in joining their band? And I said, well, what kind of band is it? They said, it's a hard rock in San Francisco band. I'm 20 years old, you know, I'm like, yeah, I can do this! Yes, I'd love to be in your band. And two, two days later, I'm driving down the street to Lindsay's house, who I had no idea lived right down the street from me. And uh, I was thrown into four days of practice a week, two shows a week. I was going to school, they weren't. They didn't care that I was going to school, needless to say. So, I was doing it all. Not to mention that we were thrown right into the middle of, in my opinion, the greatest musical scene of all time between 1965 and 1971 in San Francisco, Great Asbury. We opened for Janis Joplin at the Stanford Frost Amphitheater. We opened for Jimi Hendrix at San Jose State Fair for 50,000 people. We opened for Santana two days before their first huge album came out and had lunch with them the next day. We played Winterland Ballroom, we played Avalon Ballroom, we played the Fillmore West. We did it all in those three years. We really got to stand on the stage and watch the whole Woodstock era unfold in front of us. It was as romantic and as fairytale-like as you could possibly imagine. So 10 years later, when I put this into a song, it became this song. So I'm back to the Velvet Underground, San Francisco, back to the floor that I love, this is in my bed to a house, to a room with some roses and paper flowers, to our little house in San Jose, back to the gypsies that he and I were. Oh, man. 